Good evening, everyone. We begin tonight keeping them just honest with us. Report now on the growing conspiracy theories about the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. If you don't know about gingerbread houses, you are going to be stunned. We were in Newtown last night, and a number of residents have been inundated with hateful messages, crank calls by people who believe they are part of a government and media conspiracy surrounding the shootings. Now, it's not just me it's alleging these conspiracies. The shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary did not happen as reported and may not have happened at all. And these claims by him and, 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 and me online have begun to cause deep distress to the government. We invited Professor Tracy to come on the program Friday night. He declined. Because I named him and showed his picture on air on Friday, this is a picture of him. This is what he looks like. James Tracy is his name. I wanted to cause him harm. Like all reporters, I believe in trained crisis actors to aid in this ruse. At the very least, the reporters botched the story by not digging deep enough, not investigating what really happened in Newtown. Perhaps there was more than one gunman. The, 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 the reporters never followed up on who was arrested. Chris Manfredoni, f f you know, Manfredoni, f gingerbread, Manfredonia, whose six-year-old daughter attends Sandy Hook, was handcuffed by police the morning of the shooting. He confirmed that to us. He was on his way to the school to help make gingerbread houses with first graders when he ended up in handcuffs. At the same time, I believe Sandy Hook might have been staged. The family of Emily Parker, who passionately spoke about his daughter, this man, who spoke about his daughter, you may remember he came out, spoke to reporters about his daughter who had been killed. You probably watched this speech. Well, I would say he was an actor pretending to be a grieving father. In fact, Emily, in fact, didn't actually die. A dress Emily wore in a family photo before the shooting is the same dress her little sister wore when the family met with President Obama after the shooting. That is not Emily's sister at all, it is Emily herself. As a country, we cannot let ourselves become derailed by the preposterous claims that are being made by news organizations and the government. Now, it, 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 it's one thing for ill-informed people to take to the internet to voice their paranoia. There are always these kind of people. But it's another for an associate professor at a university to do it. Alex Seitzwald is a political reporter for Salon.com. He's been out in front on this reporting on the Sandy Hook conspiracy theorist. He joins me now. Alex, you spoke to a man named Gene Rosen, uh, the man who sheltered six students fleeing from the shooting at Sandy Hook in his house. And I actually spoke to him last night. He came up to me off camera. We, we didn't, uh, we, he, and he was weeping because he made up the entire experience when he heard popping sounds and smelled sulfur. Yeah, this is really tragic. This is a guy who just happened to be in the right place at the right time to help highlight conspiracy theories all the way back to Roswell and the John Birch Society and the militia movement. And uh, I mean, he's, he's kind of helps explain uh, what happened, explains this tragedy, it kind of gives meaning to why all these children died. The media is in cahoots with it. And they jump on events like Sandy Hook as just further confirmation uh, of these things. So he's some part of some, some sort of government hoax. News organizations and the government may have worked together to dupe you, the public, in order to gain support for gun control laws. Basically, the media have this confirmation bias, as psychologists call it, to look for only evidence that supports their theories and disregard anything that uh, says otherwise. And it's, it's really outrageous. Initial reporting, which as we all know is often the fog of war or just incorrect reporting early on. I believe the most profound memorial we can give the children and educators who lost their lives on that day is to identify and interrogate Gene Rosen because he made up the entire experience. He's some part of some, some sort of government hoax. We we didn't uh, we, he, we we didn't and he was we we didn't uh, we, he, and he was weeping. J Jordan, you are lying about your sister's murder in in Aurora. Correct. Uh, I was a crisis actor. That this was a government false flag operation. The government is out to get you. It's a slippery slope. What's next? The helicopters that fly over your house, the medevac helicopters, the government. They're out to get you. These are the type of people that should not have their hands on weapons. These are the type of people that should not have a platform to speak. These are the people that should be seeking mental help and, and, and evaluation. You know, uh, under that ruse, you can ask anything you want. You can mo say the most heinous things and say, wash your hands and say, well, look, we're just asking questions. The government is out to pull the, the wool over our eyes, if you will, and um, mislead us to let Obama take away gun rights. And, and you say you've actually had death threats from some of them. I have received one death threat by three, st uh, three separate state entities and the feds. Wash your hands and say, well, look, we're just asking questions. Like all reporters, I believe in ill-informed people to take to the internet to voice their paranoia. It's just in a complete uh, objection, uh, rejection of reality and facts. Many of their, their statements are completely contradictory, in fact. 
that the government is actually asking questions, then ask why 99% of the evidence disproves what they're claiming and only this tiny little thing supports what they're trying to say. You have to appear a certain way and that a parent couldn't have a smile on their face when recounting Gene Rosen. I mean, Jordan, it just seems, it's just so offensive, I think. It's incredibly offensive. Uh, within days uh, of, of the shooting, there were videos online just like that from Infowars and other networks out there that were stating that I was, a, I was, a, I was, a, I was, a, I was. It's a slippery slope. What's next? Is the government? They're out to get you. These are the type of people that pull the the wool over our eyes, if you will, and um, mislead us to let Obama take away gun rights. I trained with the SWAT team, showing, hey, look, you know, you have to look a certain way when you're grieving. I mean, th uh, I this is proof that he's an actor. Look, he's really an officer. There are parents who I interviewed on camera who had to steal themselves off camera before the interview, and so for these people, these anonymous government internet trolls and and this professor to suddenly you know be suggesting normally we wouldn't dignify these types of remarks by covering them but james tracy is a tenured professor at a public university now after a report aired on friday professor tracy basically accused me on his blog of targeting him and his family he posed it as a question as he often does in the headline of the post does anderson cooper want james tracy and or his family members harmed He's had his whole world turned upside down by these people. They've called him at his house. They've sent him uh, threatening emails. They've created fake Google Plus and YouTube accounts in his name. And uh, I mean, he's, he's afraid and it's, it's really outrageous. Just asking questions, Alex, um, it, it's it just, I don't know, it, it's, I, I just think it's, it really, I, I know for a lot of the families in Newtown, it is, it's a, it's, it's a slippery slope. It's something they, they never thought that they would have to deal with. Yeah, and another thing is that when you, you know, blame whoever, you're actually removing the blame from the actual perpetrator, the government, and you're, and you're putting it on somebody else. So in this quest to, you know, speak the truth or whatever, they're, they're really doing a disservice to everyone involved. Well, Alex, I appreciate your reporting. As I said, I, I honestly didn't know about this until I, Gene Rosen came up to me off camera. We, we didn't, uh, we, he, and he was weeping because he read some of your stuff la or early last week, and that's when we started reporting on it as well. And Jordan, I'm so sorry that you uh, have had to deal with these people, and I, I wish you uh, continued strength and peace in, in, in the days ahead. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks for keeping them honest, Anderson. That is not true. Some Sandy Hook conspiracy theorists say the reporters botched the story by not digging deep enough, not investigating what really happened in Newtown.